Hey folks, John Becker here, former state representative from Claremont County, bringing to you the July issue of the Becker Report. So the Becker Report is my monthly newsletter. You can find it at beckergop.com, and you can find my contact information at the end of this video. And also, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. So in the July issue of the Becker Report, I really cover two major topics. One of which is what I lead with. It's my uh, campaign for Union Township trustee. So any help you can give me with that, sign locations or involvement in the campaign, just uh, please reach out to me and uh, I would appreciate your, your support and your help with that. You know, the other thing I want to talk about is the COVID uh, crisis and the, the, the latest uh, alleged crisis. I say alleged because it's really unclear how much of a crisis, if any, that it is. I mean, there was a lot of hysteria in the uh, original uh, COVID uh, crisis uh, from a year ago. And, uh, you know, it, it turned out that it was uh, really only applied to older people and people with uh, comorbidities, that uh, younger people, uh, particularly if you're under age 30, you know, your survival rate of COVID was, uh, it was virtually 100%. So I have a number of questions regarding this current, I think they call it the uh, Delta strain. And uh, it's a matter of putting it in perspective, and that's what I want, is I want perspective on how to evaluate this risk. So in the uh, July edition of the Becker Report, I just simply list a, a number of questions, and I do hyperlink a few things. So first off, it's this bizarre thing about these uh, mask uh, mandates and the CDC telling people to wear masks and Dr. Fauci telling people to wear masks. Well, they've uh, you know, originally said, uh, don't wear masks because uh, they're not effective. Turns out they were correct about that. They also said uh, the N95 is really the, the best to protect yourself from, from getting the virus. That also, turned, that also turned out to be true. But they said not to use the N95 because, uh, you know, they're needed for healthcare workers. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, you know, the, what about the other masks? Well, the, the, the studies I've seen show that those masks are ineffective. But the one study that I uh, cite the, the most is from the CDC. It's on their website and it's hyperlinked in, the, in my newsletter. And it shows that at best, the efficacy rate of these masks are 1.8%. Well, I'm not a statistician, but 1.8% sounds like it's in the margin of error. So in essence, what the CDC is saying, according to their data, is that the masks are virtually useless. So that begs the question, why are they continuing to shove them down our throats? So some other questions I have then about though, and these are outlined, I'm just going to read these to you kind of one at a time here that are in the, again, the July edition of the Becker Report, is uh, what about the age groups that are currently being affected by this uh, Delta virus? Is it the older uh, people again, or, or is it a different age group? Since they're not telling us, or at least it doesn't seem to be uh, widely available what, what that is, um, I'm assuming it's probably the same as it was last time. It's older people and people with comorbidities that uh, need to be concerned about it and not the rest of us. You know, what about, what about the pre-existing condition? Same question. Well, you know, are they still counting a COVID diagnosis as a COVID death without regard to the actual cause of death? So, you know, in, in the past, and I believe it's still true, that if you have a traffic accident or you fall off a ladder, you go to the hospital, on the way in, you're tested for COVID, you're positive, and then you die of your injuries, they list, the, list you as a COVID death without regard to the cause of death. Uh, so just to put things in perspective, how do current death rates for COVID compare to the seasonal flu prior to COVID? So I think out of the CDC website, I think there's like 35,000 of the flu that died you know, to, in a typical year. And if flu and pneumonia together, I think it's like 55,000 going from, from memory here. Then, uh, you know, what is it from this Delta strain uh, of COVID? Is it, are we, are we talking in the 35, 55,000 if you annualize these numbers? Or is it something different? Well, if it's, if it's in that range, then it's just as dangerous as the flu. I mean, I, I would like to know that just for perspective. Is it still true that for working age people and younger, the risk of being a vehicular fatality is greater than the risk of being a COVID fatality. So those are some numbers I ran, uh, might have been last year, and this is in uh, one of the editions of the, of the, of the Becker report that, that I did some time ago, that showed the, for the working age population, so it'd be age you know, 65 and less, that uh, your, your dangers of, uh, you know, the risk of dying in an automobile accident 
is uh, greater than dying of COVID. So it's a matter of just putting it in perspective. Why are opinions contrary to the CDC and the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, continuing to be censored? What is it that they don't want us to know? You know, just, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a, a body of knowledge out there. there. There's a lot of professional opinions, and not all of them are in sync with the CDC and, and the WHO. So, you know, let us have all the data and let us, you know, cipher through it and figure it out and make decisions for ourselves. You know, when you're, when you're censoring the data, it makes us suspicious. Well, you know, what are you hiding? What is it that you don't want us to know? You know, what is the greater risk, an experimental vaccine and its side effects? or the COVID virus for the vast majority of the population. So I've had friends uh, that, that have had this vaccine and they talk about how they were sick for, for three days with it. Well, you know, most people that get, that, that get COVID aren't sick at all, or they have uh, mild symptoms. So, you know, which, which is, you know, the, the greater risk in terms of uh, symptoms of the vaccine or, or COVID itself. And, and that seems to be unknown or, or they don't want us to know what that is. Consider this a uh, greater risk. You're more likely to get murdered in Chicago than be hospitalized for COVID-19. And I have uh, that study uh, hyperlinked in my newsletter as well. Given that a large majority of people have been vaccinated and a large unknown number have natural immunity due to prior infection and recovery, how close are we to herd immunity? Why don't they want us to know? So. Again, with the uh, uh, majority of people, vast majority have the the, uh, the virus, and some unknown number have had COVID, and there's a lot of people who have had COVID and just don't know it because there was no symptoms, or you know it's called asymptomatic or or, or mild symptoms like like it's the, it's the common cold. So we don't know how many people are out there who have the natural immunity. So and it also begs the question, you know, does anybody really trust our government? And, uh, you know, trusting our government is a very dangerous thing. So, folks, that's, the, uh, that's what I've covered in the July issue of the Becker Report. So, again, please uh, subscribe if you would. My contact information is at the end of this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you uh, next month. Have a good day. Bye-bye.